So at this end, it's not a bad idea just to cut a little wedge out of either side. And that just allows it to shape in around your proximal phalanx a little bit better. Just makes it more comfortable, sticks a bit better. So just do that. Again, tear your backing paper so you don't have to touch it. Touch the glue and then stick that on. And then just wrap that in around there. And that just allows that to come in and anchor on there. Okay. Now again, I would usually put a, a rigid tape or something to lock that off. We want to get, the reason that we were off the toe, I didn't really explain, but if we come off the toe, it creates an artificial windlass mechanism. So when the toe goes into extension, it tightens up the tape, which creates more resistance to the foot flattening out, okay? Particularly between that heel off, toe off, it's going to help maintain that resupination to give you a, a better, more stable lever to push off. Now, I usually do it from that side, but because we have the camera, I'm going to try and do it from here. Peel a bit of your tape, your backing paper off enough to get you to your heel, okay? Don't push on the uh, end of the toe because that's going to give you a lot of IP flexion, which is then going to be uncomfortable. They're going to weight bear on the toe. So push on your proximal phalanx so you get MTP flexion without IP flexion, okay? Anchor through there with your fingers and then I'm going to take up the tension through that medial longitudinal arch and smooth down to the heel. And you'll notice I'm in Plantar flexion, forefoot adduction, inversion a bit, okay, big toe flexion. Then I'm going to sweep around the heel, and I've got to come, the easy way is to come over the top, but that, if you think of, again, what our aim is, our aim is to lift the navicular and invert, which means I've got to come up from underneath it. So i actually got to come around the heel, the harder way, underneath, okay? And then I find the tubicle of the navicular, and I'm going to lift it up, okay? Now, I could just, as we saw in that one, just lock off to the lateral malleolus, and that's going to create a deceleration of this one dropping in this way. But sometimes, particularly in some of those really mobile athletes, your dancers and things like that, who are really uh, a bit unstable through the midfoot, you might want to actually come all the way around, and this is bringing in another mechanism, which we'll talk about in a second, and it creates, um, A, it creates a bit of a lift of your transverse arch, and if you can maintain your transverse arch, it's much better to, easier to maintain your longitudinal arches. Um, but also it gives this compression, which will help to stabilise, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay. Then, at this end, I can do a few other things. So I could, if I wanted to bring in a bit of a direct tibialis posterior function, come up behind the medial malleolus in plantar flexion inversion, and that's going to give me, basically mimic my tibialis posterior directly. So it's going to resist them coming out and bring them back. Okay, it's a plantar flexion inversion. If I wanted more tibialis anterior, I could bring them into dorsiflexion inversion and run a bit anterior to the uh, uh, mal medial malleolus and lock off on this side. Okay, and that's going to give me more of a resistance to this dropping in and coming up that way. Okay, so depending on what you want to get. If you can maintain your arch a bit and decelerate them dropping and spring them back, even if you don't bring in those last sections, that's going to reduce your tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior overactivity anyway. Okay? But if you wanted to then more directly bias one, you could do that. And this tape actually feels, I have, I've had stress fractures in both of my shins, this actually feels really nice up the shin bone. I've had several people tell me that and I haven't sort of cued them in on it and they've just said, you know, it feels really nice on the bone. So, whether that's a bit of that boxing up and whatever, I'm not sure, but it, it does feel very nice on there. Okay, um, so you can just come up and lock off over onto there. Okay, uh, you can choose either, or just come and don't do that full circumferential one and just come up and, and lock over to here. Okay, if it was somebody, say, who had a syndesmosis injury, so say, you know, they tend to occur weight bearing external rotation, right? So often people are getting tackled or something and you get that weight bearing. Uh, external rotation and you get that inferior tib-fib joint issues and that, that um, diastasis or syndesmosis injury. We could again, and this is that force closure idea which we'll expand upon, come all the way around to create some compression through that inferior tib-fib joint, through that recoil of the tape, okay? Um, and so if it's created that way, then we want to go the other way, which is this. If there are lateral ankle sprain, chronic lateral ankle sprain with this, then we're not going to do that. We'll, we'll show you a different technique for that. Okay, so plantar flexion inversion, big toe flexion, we come off the big toe through the arch to the heel 
around the heel but underneath and then lift up and lock off or go all the way around to give us a bit of that compression. Dorsiflexion inversion to do tib ant, plantar flexion inversion and behind the malleolus to do tib post.